Hi, I'm Carl from Apt, and in this video, I'll be giving you a closer look at the Sonos Beam Gen 2. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all our new products, and don't forget to click the link in the description after the video to see our latest pricing on the Beam, as well as our full selection of soundbars and home theater products. If the second generation Beam looks a little familiar, that's because not much has changed on the exterior, aside from the grill, which I actually think is a bigger deal than it might seem. The grill on the first generation was made from cloth, and while it looked nice, it picked up dust pretty easily and had the potential for tears. For a nicer quality soundbar, it just didn't feel as premium as its price suggested. Now, instead of cloth, it's a perforated plastic material that's easy to clean and both looks and feels a lot more upscale. It's a small detail, but one that makes you feel like you're getting more for your money. Onboard controls are still the same. You get touch controls for play and pause, skipping or replaying a track, and a button that mutes the onboard microphones. And it's the same size as the original, 25.625 inches wide, 2.72 inches high, and 3.94 inches deep. It also retains the same inputs as the original with an Ethernet and HDMI, but now the HDMI has an enhanced audio return channel that lets it play back lossless Dolby Atmos signals, which is the big advantage over the original beam. In addition, you get an optical adapter in the box in case you need to use the optical output on your TV instead of HDMI, plus Wi-Fi that works on 2.4 or 5 gigahertz channels. Unfortunately, still no Bluetooth, but that's not a huge deal since this works so well with Wi-Fi. Going back to the addition of the enhanced audio return channel and its Atmos capabilities, if you're not familiar with Dolby Atmos, it's a form of surround sound, but instead of sending sound to dedicated channels like left, right, and center, Atmos involves object tracking and adds height effects to give a true sense of 3D audio. So, for example, in a traditional surround system, most all the dialogue would come from the center channel, regardless of where the people are located on the screen. With Atmos, if someone is standing on the right side of the screen, it'll sound like their audio is coming from the right, or say a bird chirps up in a tree, that's where the sound will seem to come from. And it's not just for movies, there's even music available now that's mastered in Atmos. So, Atmos compatibility is definitely a huge benefit of the Gen 2 Beam, but another benefit you get with every Sonos speaker is their app. This is, as far as I'm concerned, the best app for wireless home audio out there. It's simple to understand, consolidates all your music into one place, and allows enough customization for you to set it up in a way that just makes it easy to find whatever it is that you're looking for. You can have all your speakers playing the same thing, have them all playing something different, and adjust volumes, all from one spot. Now, as for how the Beam produces sound, it's actually the same speaker arrangement as the first gen. There's a single center-mounted tweeter, four mid-range woofers, and three passive radiators. So you may be wondering, how can it produce Atmos audio without any upward-firing drivers? Well, it's all in the processing. The higher-powered processor found in the Gen 2 can produce five speaker arrays versus three on the first gen. This is gonna allow the Beam to send specific sounds to the correct locations, as opposed to forcing them into a designated channel. And even though there aren't upward firing speakers, with the way the processor tweaks timing and frequencies, you get a good sense of height when you're playing back Atmos content, whether it's in a movie or you're just listening to music. The entire audio experience is improved over the first gen. Voices come through clear, and sound is projected over a wider area, which adds up to a better acoustic experience. Plus, just like with the other Sonos soundbars available, you can add their optional sub for way more bass and some ones or even fives as dedicated rear channels for a truly immersive experience. But there are a couple questions we get a lot in regards to the Beam Gen 2. The first is, is it worth replacing my original Beam? And the answer is, not in every case. Both of them are gonna support Google Assistant, Alexa, and Apple's AirPlay 2, and the Gen 1 still sounds great for its size. So if you don't listen to a lot of Atmos content, you may not notice the benefits of the Gen 2 all that much. If you do though, or you're looking for something that has even clearer dialogue and a wider soundstage, then I'd definitely consider upgrading. The other question we get a lot is, should I get this one or the Arc? Now, the Arc definitely has its advantages, like being more powerful and having dedicated upward firing drivers for a better Atmos experience, but it also costs twice as much. If it's going in a big family room and you have the budget, the Arc is the way to go, but another option to consider if you have the budget for the Arc, but a small room is going with the Beam and a couple of ones for rear channels. It's less expensive than the Arc and it sounds phenomenal. So 
Although the changes were fairly minor, the Beam Gen 2 remains a major contender in the small soundbar arena and should definitely be on your list if you're looking to upgrade your home theater with a compact soundbar. If you have any questions on the Beam Gen 2 or which Sono system might work best in your home, be sure to contact our experts here at APT. We're always happy to help. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.